yourself. Do not have relationships with people based on your one night stands. <laughs> Somebody's willingness to fuck you tonight is not a good indicator of long-term compatibility. And with you, I don't even get to know what went wrong. So I'm just gonna assign you a number, let's make it four, and I'll assume that you freaked out because I'm trans and I made you feel gay. It's okay, really, my fault, and expecting a normal person to get into bed with a monster like me for more than a few weeks is like asking queer people to get breeding, move to the suburbs, and stop being fabulous. <laughs> but that's all right. You lay on the buddy honorific, I know what it means. It means faggot, the kind that I am and you're not because nowhere in the continuum between John Wayne and Liberace is there a place for you. Not Orlando, not Byron, not Tiresias, not me. But because this agony is getting a little bit tired, dear, sweet reader, I want to thank you. You've read me as I write me, you've suspended your disbelief and girded your suspicion, and so I want to give you something pure. So, th this is it. There's nothing left to pull away but padding, and so you see that I bind my chest. I do it for me, because it hurts too much not to. But I do it for you, too, so the agony doesn't leap out and blind you, but it's also an informative footnote. It teaches you how to address me and undress me. It says, stop inviting me to your women's committee meetings and your spa days and your baby shower. Do keep inviting me to your house parties. Keep trying to get into my pants. Please keep trying to get into my pants. <laughs> So I think I've given you enough now, reader, to get it. Can I help number five, please? Number five. <clears throat> I love you the way a salmon remembers his river. Like animal prints in the snow at a cabin you no longer remember from your youth. Like the late afternoon sun glinting between your quiet eyes and the surface of the lake. I am falling off the wagon from grace and for you. And I need to tell you from the bottom of this pitcher of wine that I was hoping would dull my agony over it, but which has only thrown it into a despair sharper than your teeth against the pulse churning over the bones in my wrist, that I love you, and you're the loveliest thing that I've ever loved and never touched. Now, I don't tell you that our love is sacred, or even that my love for you is sacred, because I muddied those waters long ago, and it could be that the best that I can hope for is sounding holy, as the kilometers arch their backs away from us in the rear of your mirror, as you trust me enough to sleep. I don't have a list of the things that I would give you, but you say you like the crushing lines that close like a sharp trap or open like a wet flower. Don't look at me when you are smiling. Rome didn't burn in a day and your looks are longer. Keep the smell of home, the crest of your neck makes to yourself. I'm not that strong right now. For although I want to hold you for longer than time toys the sand, it only takes a second to write your partner's name and make the trinity obscene. There's one more, and then we'll let you go home. Thank you. I just need a minute. Okay, I'm telling your wife. You good? You ready? Don't worry, I'm going to make that better. <laughs> if I had known that leaving you would be like this, in retrospect, I never would have had the strength to board the train. And yesterday, as I was driving through rural Quebec, 
I allowed myself to think for more than just a second about what the future would look like if it folded itself around us both. Something about the way the automobile spewed burnt dinosaurs and the triple step of the kilometers over the bones of our ancestors made me want to teach you French and settle down by a river somewhere. And today, from half a continent away, stepping over the picked over parts of my city and Vancouver's downtown east side, I can't keep that hope at bay. I am pinned by more than these needles, and I don't know how I matched the cadence of my footsteps to the sound of your voice because neither of us could speak, because we were looking at each other, silence between us sparking. But I feel every line, like I'm speed reading the calendar pages, blood brailing the guardrail with my paper cut fingerprints. Sean, I could force the days through bedsheet to bus stop to beer tap. Aorta to ventricle to itching vein, kiss to quiver to sigh. If there weren't so many days, if they were thin blank pages instead of all of these dusting volumes already saturated with the way that you kissed me, like I was migratory birds and you were safe land. Thank you. Thank you.